how to run structural equation modeling using smart pairs for to do this we need to go to new project and then i will uh, just name the uh, project for example tom 234 create and then here it will ask me to import the data or create model so i, I will just import the data first I will just go to the desktop and then import the data. So here it is imported on SPSS or Excel. And then we can click import. So here is the data. I will just go back and then go to create model. And I will name the model. But before naming it, I will choose uh, which one to, uh, to have, which uh, type of analysis or model. Here we choose Palace Sim, that is partial list square structure equation modeling. And we can say, for example, Likert scale uh, one, and then click save. Once it's saved, I need to draw the uh, theoretical or uh, the model that I have uh, so that we can uh, run the test. I just pick the IV or the independent variables by clicking the first one and then uh, clicking the, the last one using a control and the shift then i will just move them here so this is the iv so as you can see these are the indicators or the liquid scale items and this is the composite score or the latent uh, variable and then i move the dv for instance which is here again i will do uh, the same i will follow the same steps and then click ok uh, so this is the IV and DV. I could just draw a direct relationship path between the two. I could further change the positions of the uh, indicators by the position of the indicators. So here when I select, I just go here and change the indicator position. And then I can move the uh, dependent variable so it's already moved and the mediator or moderators so here let's move the moderator variable here type ok or enter and I could could also put mediator in between here we go now I can draw the path, so the direct path between the IV and the DV, then the mediator, then I could draw what we call moderating effect by just drawing these lines here. So this is a moderator and this is mediator, this is the independent variable and this is the dependent variable. After I finish drawing the model, I can just uh, alter its uh, color by just uh, select everything, select all, and then click this icon, so it will look more professional. Then we have the uh, uh, the calculates, and then I go to PLSM, and I will just run the model on this uh, uh, default setting. Sometimes I need to check. Uh, missing data etc before running anything so i will just click start calculating and here is the uh, measurement model you can see here discriminant validity all in green is good like the htmt hetero trait mono trait ratio is good then we have the fauna lock uh, criterion which is good again and then we have the cross loadings like in factor analysis then we can check collinearity of the uh, indicators there are some collinearity issues or some values exceed point uh, or five uh, like 5.0 so it says uh, six here and four etc then we have the outer model uh, then we have other uh, tests like reliability so we could see the Cronbach alpha reliability and composite reliability a and c and the average variance extracted I could also go to the graphical output and check the loadings. All of them are loading good uh, in, ter in terms of the construct or the latent constructs. If some items load less than uh, 0.5, they can be removed. 
So here I don't need to remove any item, all of them are loaded to their corresponding uh, latent constructs. So this is the measurement model in brief. I can import this in Excel. So I will just export it rather and then save it. Once it's saved. So here is the Excel file. I could check all the indicators, especially collinearity statistics. So I could just come here and I will find collinearity statistics. And for collinearity statistics, there are two types. We have the outer model list. This is one type. And we have the inner model list or matrix. So inner model list, this one. So here I could see the, 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 the path along with the uh, collinearity level. So all collinearity values are good to go. And these are the uh, path coefficients. And this is what we call lateral collinearity of the inner model. Uh, what else? I could also check the Fornalak uh, criterion tables. Uh, you will find a lot of uh, values like heterotrait, monotrait ratio. Then we have construct reliability and validity as you can see from this table. So I could just be picking the appropriate uh, in let's say statistics and reporting them in the paper. So this is how we can assess the measurement model with regard to reliability, validity, and collinearity. Now, if we want to test the hypothesis, we can go to the, to the structural model. So I will just keep everything. I will save this. And then I will move to uh, edit this model. But in calculate, instead of calculating PLSM, I will just do bootstrapping. So here the bootstrapping is recommended to be between 5,000 to 10,000, depending on the reference that you are using. Here we could do most important percentile, two-tailed if you, if you don't know the relationship directions among the hypotheses, uh, like some hypotheses are positive and others are negative, they show positive or negative impact, so this is two-tailed. But if you know the direction of the hypothesis, like there is a positive impact on all the hypotheses, negative impact on all the hypotheses. This is what we call one tail. So depending on your hypothesis, you could choose between one tail or two tail. Then you set the significance level and, and this significance level will determine also the threshold of T value, etc. There is a reference that I can share with you concerning these uh, statistics. So let's just start calculating in this uh, way, uh, keeping it uh, default, everything and click start calculating. So once I calculated the path coefficients, so here this tests the uh, hypothesis as you can see. I can also show the path coefficients and the p-value. For example, this one is statistically significant impact of 81.3%. Uh, so this is positive impact. The r square that is the explained the r square power, so to speak, here is 66.1%. And the same here is 72 0.5% uh, and these are statistically significant relationships all of the hypotheses are statistically significant so we reject the null hypothesis and we uh, uh, let's say uh, support the alternative hypothesis and these path coefficients di differ between uh, like the strength of the, the impact differ or differs between the uh, the hypothesis which is good so uh, anyway, we can just uh, see the path coefficients also from here. If there are direct path coefficients, if they are indirect, we can see them from here. Uh, we can have specific indirect and total effects and their outer loadings and then outer weights. In case the model is formative, then we have path coefficients histogram. You can see it visually speaking. But what we need to report uh, is just the path coefficients like the p-value and the t-value and the uh, the coefficient. So anyways, we can just export again this in Excel. So I click export and then save. Uh, so let me just name this, which is structural model. S. It's not structural model. Yeah, so this is the structural model. The, the, the first one was the measurement model. Okay, so let's click save. And then we will find the uh, path coefficients. So here we, so here we could find the path coefficients. 
and you can see the hypotheses and their uh, p-values and t-statistics and uh, coefficients from here. Uh, so these are the uh, statistics and hypothesis tests in brief. You could just uh, keep uh, uh, looking for the paths and uh, checking the uh, p-value and the beta coefficient to see the impacts uh, and its uh, statistical significance to see whether you will uh, support or not support the hypothesis. So this is in brief how you can uh, run structural equation modeling on liquid scale data and interpret the results or export them and then interpret them. If you have other questions or remarks, do not hesitate to uh, post them below or contact me and see you soon. Bye for now.